lovely people and welcome to the Art Hive and in today's video I have for you a product review and I'll be trying out Faber-Castell's Albert Durer watercolour pencils. I hope I've said that right. So I picked these up a little while ago on Amazon when they were on offer and I think I paid £30. So the set I've got is the 36 set and this is a nice presentation case as well because it comes with a nice sleeve, a really good quality box with a magnetic closure. So that's really nice to keep them all safe in and inside as well as the pencils you also get this information leaflet which gives you information about the history of Albert Durer as well as some tips and techniques to try and I thought it'd be rather fun to go through some of these today and then we can see what the quality of them is and look at some of the possibilities as well. So it goes through some wet te techniques and some dry techniques so I thought it would be quite good to make up a little chart and go through some of those and see how they perform. You also get in this set a paintbrush as well and that's just a round paintbrush in size 6 and it looks fairly good quality but I'm going to try that out as well when we do the testing of the pencils. So the pencils themselves are really nice quality, their casing is made of cedarwood, Californian cedarwood, so they're quite nice and hard. And on each pencil it will also tell you the colour as well as the light fastness and the brand as well. They are a sort of a hexagonal shape which can be good for getting a good grip on the pencil but may be a disadvantage to some people who haven't got a pencil sharpener that can cope with these but the one I use is like a manual crankshaft one and that copes fine with it. So the advantage of the wood casing with these pencils is that it does make them quite durable and quite hard and to start with I'm just going in with some dry techniques so I'm just going to try the pencils as they are and lay down like a colour swatch for each pencil. And the fact that they're really hard lead and hard casing means that you can really get some really vibrant colours by pushing down on the pencil without them breaking. So it's a really good range of colours and the set does have available 120 different colours in this particular range. But this 36 that I've got I think um, is a really nice selection and certainly if you want to try them out it's a really good place to start. So I have to say that even just doing the um, pencils dry like this you can't really tell any difference in quality from one cut color to the next some pencils you find some colors are a bit gritty or grainy but with these the whole lot that I tried out seemed really smooth and really um, nice to use really vibrant colors so going into the wet techniques then the first technique I'm going to try is painting over a color with a wet brush now this is the main way I suppose everyone would use them so I'm just um, picking out colors that would look quite bright on camera I'm not going to try all of them but rest assured that they do all behave evenly so they all react really well with water they dissolve super well and the colors that you get are so vibrant it's really impressive so as you can see I've just added some water there and that color is really vibrant and really intense you get a lot of pigment from these pencils but like any watercolour pencil or any watercolour, the more water you add, the more dilute and the lighter the colour is. But it gives a really even colour and a really nice um, vibrant tone. And just like watercolour, I'm just showing you here that you can, if you have a wet paintbrush, you can just um, lift off colour in the same way you would with watercolour to leave areas of lightness or certainly if you wanted to lift up or um, correct any mistakes then that seemed entirely possible with these pencils as well. So the second technique I'm going to try is drawing on wet paper so that's a dry pencil on pre-wetted paper. 
So the thing I noticed straight away with these is they actually kind of melt on the paper and look how vibrant that colour is. It is super smooth, there's no grittiness, there's no streakiness, it just lays down really nice bright pigmented colour straight away. The other thing that you can do if you don't want to put too much pigment down is you can apply a wet brush to the pencil lead itself and just use it as a watercolour that way and that maybe give you a little bit more control over how much pigment you're putting down and is good if you want to do lighter washes. So the third wet technique that I'm going to try is spraying the colour with water. So this is a bit of fun and you can use this sort of technique um, and this special effect for lots of things in your paintings. So again I'm not trying out every colour with all of these designs because they all work equally well. I'm just picking colours that show up really well on camera. So obviously the amount of pigment that you put down can have an effect on the result but they go down really smoothly, they layer really nicely and you can use them just as regular dry colour pencils if you want to. They blend well and they mix together really nicely as dry pencils and as you can see when you add the water to the colour pencil area there it really spreads, it really gives a nice sort of effect and I think you could use this in a lot of painting styles. The other thing to notice as you can see that I'm doing there is where the paint spread over my um, chart there you can just get a, a kitchen roll or a damp cloth and just wipe that away it does lift up really well. So the fourth technique that I'm going to try is using the um, colours on the left hand side that I put down dry almost as a paint palette in themselves. So if you didn't want to apply the pencil first you can just use these little dots of colour as paint in their own right. So just like a palette and as you can see it works just like you're using a pan or something like a watercolour pan. So I tried this out a couple of times, the first one was um, dry on dry so you had like a well wet on dry rather wasn't it so you had a wet paintbrush and dry paper and then the second one was wet paper and a wet paintbrush so you can see I'm doing it a third time on the end there that um, if you add water first those colours really do spread out into the water and you can get some really nice wet on wet techniques which is great for mixing colours as well so you can either mix them on the paper or you can mix them separately on a piece of paper first. Either way works great. So for the fifth wet technique we are going to try adding some salt. So this is just one of the techniques that's suggested and obviously you can try things like cling film, bubble wrap, you can do all sorts of things as you would for any watercolour that you're going to try. So I'm just laying down quite a heavy layer of um, this indigo colour and the paper is a little bit wet from the technique before but that's okay because we're going to add water to it anyway. So I'm just coming in with a paintbrush with quite a lot of water on it there and see how bright that colour comes out. It's really intense and really vivid and really does contain a lot of pigment so that colour can go a long way. I'm just going to add quite a lot of water for this technique because um, when you're adding salt it does absorb the water from the paper so I think it will show up better if um, you add more water. And here we are with the salt, just the regular table salt, they're going to wonder where that is later but yep yeah, I just grinded some salt on there and as you can see as soon as it hit the paint and the water that salt had a really nice effect and gave some really 
good sort of blooms and stars and just looks really pretty and obviously once that's dry you can brush the salt off. So the last technique that I'm going to use for um, the wet technique section is adding pencil shavings to wet paper. So this was one of the ideas that was in the little booklet and something I hadn't tried before so I was keen to see how that worked. So I quit, put quite a lot of um, water on the paper for this technique and all I did was just scrape a few shavings from the pencil lid itself onto the wet paper and I was really impressed because I think this looks really fun. So as the flakes of pencil landed on the paper they really just blossomed and spread out and created some really fun effects. And just in case you didn't see it the first time round, and because I liked it, I did it again. So I think this is something that you could try on a painting after you've finished as an extra added final touch, something like that. Um, or perhaps where you would normally add paint splatters maybe. So once I've finished the wet techniques now I'm going to go on to looking at mixing the colours dry. Now obviously you can use these like regular colour pencils as I said but something to mention with these pencils is that if you're mixing them dry and you're mixing two colours together it did suggest in the little leaflet that you can get different colours depending on the order in which you layer them. So I thought we'd try this out so we put a yellow on the left, a blue on the right and when they crossed over it created a nice green colour as you might expect. But then if you add the blue first and then the yellow you get a different green. It might not be entirely visible from the video but it does appear quite dark so I would suggest giving it a go if you've got some of these pencils and see what you make of it. So there's quite a lot of possibilities of things that you can try because I've not really thought that it would make a difference just changing the order in which you layer things that's something I might look at again and last of all what was mentioned in the back of the leaflet was just to say that these pencils can be good for using with mixed media so that means that you could try them with pastels you can try them with the regular polychromos and actually all the colors that are listed in this box do match up with the colors in the other Faber-Castell range so it matches up with the polychromos and the pit pastel so the colors are comparable so I thought I would try out just a little ink character here and see if adding the water to the pencil does anything to the ink around it now I do tend to use um, permanent ink so I wasn't expecting it to sort of blur the ink lines but it's just something that you might not have thought about mixing with media certainly mixing with other things like pastels I haven't actually tried that myself before but it's really nice to have a pencil that is so flexible and I think it's sometimes easier to get out a pencil box than it is to get out like a whole palette of paints or whatever and you can get these really bright vibrant colors just from a pencil and I think that's pretty amazing and I was actually really impressed with the way they mixed the smoothness and the fact that they didn't leave any lines or stripes or pencil strokes when you added the water they did actually dissolve completely which was really impressive so I definitely recommend giving these a go let me know in the comments box what you think if you've got any or perhaps if you've tried any other brands and how do they compare but that's all for today's video I hope you found it helpful and maybe it will inspire you to give these pencils a go I'm certainly going to try using them to paint the picture now I know 
the sort of the possibilities and the limitations not that there are many limitations but I'd certainly like to try out using them on a painting so if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future videos and I'll see you next week for another video thanks for watching guys bye